I'm here with Amanda Young, curator of astronaut equipment from the Early Space Program. Amanda, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Absolutely. Well, I have about the world's best job. <laughs> Nobody gets it any better than this. I look after the spacesuits and um, all the things that the astronauts from the early programs took with them to the moon or into space. And that includes the medical equipment, all the urine collection devices, all the food, and of course the spacesuits and the equipment they wore. Is there anything in particular that you think is really interesting to study about these spacesuits? Oh, absolutely. The spacesuits space suits are an engineering marvel. You could do everything in a spacesuit that you could ever do, either in the spacecraft or back here on Earth. You could eat, you could drink, you could go to the bathroom, you can talk to the guys back home, you can send back your heart rate and your breathing rate. There was nothing that you could not do inside a spacesuit. That's incredible. Yeah, they're cool. Now, Amanda, I know you have some amazing things in this collection. Could you just show us one or two of them? Oh, absolutely. I have here Gordon Cooper's Mercury training glove. He wore this during training before, the, um, before his mission. It's, I mean, it's a fabulous glove, but it's got the, one of the neat things about it is it's got leather palms and little, little holes there which helped to, uh, so that it wasn't slippery. And a little piece of, of elastic and rubber there, which was uh, something else which would have helped him hold on to things. And the laces and these little, little bands were to make them really tight because gloves needed to be very tight so that they, when they were pressurized, they could, they could move. On the inside here, uh, it, I'm just showing you there, it's, uh, you'll notice that it's ripped and it's actually got some fluff on it. Unfortunately, if you try to look after these things and use the wrong materials, it can end up causing more damage than it did, and that's what happened here. Now, what type of materials were put in it that made it so damaged on the inside? Actually, it was a, a polyester batting. You know, when you go quilting, mm -hmm. uh, you, the stuff you put in between the, the layers of material, that's what it was, but it was the wrong kind of polyester batting and it had mm. starch on it and as soon as the humidity went up the starch melted and stuck to the inside. So when you got it what was the best thing to preserve it that you did? Well what I do with with a glove like this is I make out of foam a little shape that goes on the inside. I cover it with conservation batting and cover it with a nylon stocking and leave a tail on so that you can pull it out carefully. Now I've heard you have some very interesting space suits to show us downstairs. Can we go there? Absolutely, let's go and have a look. So what room are we going to exactly? Well, this is the environmental storage unit and we keep the uh, space suits in here at 68 degrees and 35% humidity. It's very, very precise. It is, it's very precise and, and surprisingly difficult to maintain. Why is that? I think it's the law of physics or something. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Can you tell me which mission this spacesuit has come from? Oh, yes. This is Fred Hayes' Apollo 13 suit. It is um, an Apollo suit. It's got a designation of A7L and it weighed 58 pounds <laughs> just by itself. It, it's a heavy suit. Wow. It's a heavy suit, but it's really, really cool. What are the valves here? Oh, these are essentially, these are good air, this is bad air, that's water, and that is communications. And the reason you have two sets is so that when he was going to be attached to the spacecraft, he could also attach himself to the backpack, to the life support system, before he unhooked from the spacecraft. Wow. And these little things are called diverter valves, and they send oxygen up into the helmet. 60% of the oxygen went into the helmet so that the astronaut could breathe, but it also kept the, the helmet from fogging up. That's very cool. Do you have other examples of spacesuits that you could show me? Oh, absolutely. Here is Alan Shepard's Mercury suit. He wore this on Freedom 7. 
um, this is one of the this is the first of the US space suits and it was made by BF Goodridge and uh, still has its lovely silver color a lot of them do not have their silver color anymore why why would that be because they they started off the material started off green and they would cover them with glue and then they would put this aluminized coating on which was to reflect the heat back away from the astronaut and the glue has the aluminized coating has worn off and the glue has come through what is the spacesuit down here this is a Gemini spacesuit and um, it is a uh, what what we call an IV version it's the intravehicular in other words they did not go outside into um, to float in space because it doesn't have enough of a thermal coating on it to keep it warm Gemini suits were great were really great let me show you something else though this is really 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 cool uh, what I have here is a lunar glove isn't that gorgeous that's Wow. And that really is lunar dust. It really is. What is the white band there? From? That came from the astronaut's watch. <laughs> uh, the astronaut's watch was on a very long Velcro band, and they put it on over everything else, um, as opposed to the way you do.